Welcome back to day three of my Procreate 5X update preview. If you happen to miss days one and two, I'll go ahead and put the playlist up in a card up top so you can check those out. But if you did watch those, you know I said this was gonna be a seven day preview, one video every day for a week, but that's gonna change. I'm gonna cram all the rest of the features into today's video and tomorrow's video. And the reason behind that is because Savage Interactive announced that this update is gonna go live for everybody on Monday. For everybody asking when this update comes out, there's your answer, it comes out Monday on the 21st. And for people asking if this is a paid update, no. Procreate updates are always free. So I wanna have all the new features covered for you in time for it to come out. That way you can hit the ground running and feel comfortable with the update as soon as it goes live. So today's video, we're gonna talk about the selection color fill, the new additions to transform, and Procreate's new text layout and scribble integration with iOS 14. So if you wanna take a dive into those new features, keep watching. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about today is selection color fill. So let's go up to our selection menu here and you'll see everything down here looks pretty much the same except for the addition of color fill and that's the new feature. So I'm gonna show you how this works today. But first I wanna show you how we would approach this previously using this picture of a giraffe. If you guys watched the previous video that I did with my wife teaching an absolute beginner procreate, you'll recognize this design. And if you did watch that video, You'll remember to do the spots, we ended up making a new layer. We set this to clipping mask, and then we went around and then basically drew in the shapes and then dragged and dropped the color to color fill these in, going around making different sizes and different areas filled in. And this was just kind of tedious. It takes up a lot of time going back and forth to complete this. And like I said in yesterday's video, a lot of these updates to Procreate 5X, you could do technically in previous versions just in a different way. These updates are gonna kind of speed up your workflow and that's something that I love personally. So let me show you how this works and how it's gonna save you time. So let's go ahead and clear this one out and let's go back up to our selection and turn on color fill. And then you'll see as we start to drag this around and connect the shape, it just drags the colors in and fills them for us. We don't have to go back and forth up to our color selection. So much easier, so much quicker. And then with this, if I zoom in, you can see that I kind of use the airbrush here so it doesn't have a perfectly sharp line around here. These using the marquee is gonna have a, a super sharp line. So with this, while it's selected, you can go in and feather it out to kind of blend it in and match it up a little bit more. Then we'll lock it in and you can see, there we go. That's gonna save you so much time, it's crazy. And let me show you another way too that I'm gonna use this. I've talked about this in previous videos. So I've got my mascot Smudge the Raccoon here. I talked about using the selection a lot to do kind of hair highlights and shadows. And this will work for this as well. So if we just go in and start doing this here, I just do these kind of quick jagged lines and it's gonna fill these in super quick, super easy and you can see how it turns out. Just makes it so much faster. Once again, you could have done this before, but when you would, you would have to go to selection, let's turn off color fill, would have to do the lines here, drag and drop it in. Then you would have to go back, make another marquee again, switching back and forth between the tools, dragging it over. So you can see it's just a time saver and that's what I like about some of these updated features. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is some of the changes and additions to the transform tool. So to do that, let me go ahead and just make a circle here under a new layer. We'll lock this in and drag and drop the color. Okay, so with this, let's say I want it kind of in the center. I would have to turn on the drawing guide to figure out, okay, where exactly is the center and play around with it, take a lot of time. Changes to the transform tool are gonna to change that as well. So let's go up to our arrow here. The bounding box comes up and then you'll see the change down here. This was magnetic before. Don't worry, they did not get rid of magnetic. It's still there, but it's called snapping now. And you can bring this around and you can see that it actually snaps right there to the middle. We can bring it bigger 
and this is gonna work on the X and Y axis because I have magnetic turned off right now. If we click on snapping, you can see magnetic can be turned on and now you're gonna be able to move it on the diagonal planes as well. This is gonna come in super handy when you are trying to center stuff. It's gonna make it super easy. In addition to that, you can also change and transform the size of things numerically. So if we touch up in the corner box here, see it's gonna bring up the dimensions. So you can actually go in here and just hand type in the dimensions. Of course, it gives you the option here where you can lock it. So when you change one, it's gonna change the other as well using the same ratio. This is gonna be quick. It's gonna be a time saver too. So this is super, super cool to see. Also, if you go in here to snapping, you can change the distance and the velocity as well. That's new feature number two for today. And last but not least, let's talk about the new text layout and scribble integration with iOS 14. So if we go up to our wrench icon and we go into add text, our text is gonna pull up here. Let me change the color so we can see it. And I'm gonna drag it down. Don't wanna to show too much before I get into it. So there we go. So as you can see, once I hit the text, it's gonna bring up a new menu here. Gives you the option to see the font and then the style. Keyboard gives you the clear cut copy, paste the rest of them and the justification here. One thing here I'm not crazy about is I would like to see a drop down menu here. So if you bring up, you've got kind of the small menu. If you bring up the font, it's just gonna pull up the regular font style design and attributes menu that it did previously. So having that smaller menu here, I don't think it really does a lot since you can't adjust things from a drop down menu here as far as the font stuff goes you bring up the the font or the style it's still going to bring up this big overall sized uh, box that it had before but it is kind of nice just seeing a quick snapshot i guess so let's hit that one more time and touch that but like I said, the rest of your options are in there too. So this can come up a little bit easier. Hitting keyboard here is gonna bring up the full size keyboard at the bottom. Or if you wanna hit here, that's where it's gonna hit in and bring up the style menu. So let's go ahead and close this out. The other thing that they added as well, let's go ahead and click on this one more time. You're gonna see this icon come up in the bottom. I've got it minimized right now. And once we hit it, you're gonna see, there's a few options down here. I've got auto minimize turned on. So as soon as you're done with it and go back to something else, it's gonna wipe itself out and it closes out smaller, even though it'll stay on the screen if you're still in text. So if we pull this back up, you're gonna see, we've got undo, redo here. The uppercase, lowercase a, if you hit that, it's gonna bring up your font style design menu, that full size thing like before. One of the cool things though, if you hit this keyboard from down here, and I think this is more iOS 14 than anything else, it's gonna bring up the smaller keyboard down here at the side, which I kinda like, it doesn't take up the entire lower half of the screen, so that's a little bit more convenient. But if you have iOS 14 and the Apple Pencil, a lot of times you're not even gonna need the keyboard just because of the new scribble function. So let me show you how that works. So let's go ahead and clear this out here. And you can move this around obviously as well. So with the new scribble function, you can actually go in and just cross out your text here and then write in whatever you want it to say. You don't even need to pull up the keyboard. Uh, so that's nice because if you start typing with your fingers or even slower, just going with the pencil, kind of takes a little bit more time. This is once again, streamlining everything. And then of course, from here, you can even pull up this arrow here is basically the enter or return button. So you can drop down to another line and then you can enter in stuff here. Like so, pretty cool. This uh, scribble function also works up in the menus as well. So if you wanted to rename something, so let's say the ears, we want to rename that ears. So we can just scribble this out, whoops. Try this again, rename, scribble this out, and we can call it ears. Of course, it kind of recognized my little slice at the beginning, so it did that forward slash, but this makes things a lot easier too, because once again, you don't have to pull up that keyboard and type everything in, so it just frees up some time. Another thing here is kind of nice, as we touch on the text, let's go back here. You can actually just select 
one word. So if you have a bunch and you want to make this one font and this another font, just double tapping on that brings this up. So then you can go in here and change the font of one super easy just by double tapping. Of course here, when you do tap, once you're inside the box, tapping with your finger is going to work better because once you tap with your pencil, sometimes it's going to recognize that little smudge and you're going to do a, a period there or, you know, a underscore or something like that. So definitely keep that in mind. Sometimes it's easier with your finger than tapping with the pencil. So that's it. Those are the three new features for today's video. Like I said at the beginning, this was going to be a seven day video series highlighting a new feature each day. But because the new updates coming out on Monday, I'm going to kind of combine some of these. So then in tomorrow's video, the last one, I'm going to talk about the new gradient map feature, filters, pencil filters, and the blur brushes. And that's going to wrap up everything for the new Procreate 5X update. So hopefully that gives you guys a full rundown of all the features to get started. Hit the ground running on Monday when it rolls out to everyone. So definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications so you can get updates and alerts when I post the new videos. As for me, I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. Also, I haven't mentioned it in this series of videos, but if you are an artist that's looking to make money with your art, I have a podcast just about that. It's called Make Money With Your Art, believe it or not, and it's available wherever you listen to podcasts. I've got the link down in the description below if you guys want to check that out. So that's it for me, and until next time, keep creating.